In 2003, William Carroll Jr. donated this historic cabin and surrounding land to Douglas County with hopes that a restoration could be undertaken. A partnership with the Larkspur Historical Society, Douglas County Historic Preservation Board, and Douglas County has now enabled the project to begin. Today we're down at the Kroll Hammond Cabin, down by the KOA in Larkspur, talking about a historic renovation that we started approximately three years ago. Uh, we knew that this property was going to be coming under development and there was a white house that had been here for years and years and years and we wanted to do some investigation with the house and see uh, if it was worth restoring or what. When we went inside the house we realized that there was a, actually a log cabin within the house and we thought that was kind of an interesting scenario. So we decided that maybe we would investigate this. We knew that um, Sheriff John Hammond, he raised turkeys here, turkeys and cows, and uh, his daughter lived here for a number of years in the early 50s and raised her family. And uh, so we thought, well, let's check this out. Uh, now that the roof and the rafters and the gable ends are completed, we want to begin to do the, what's called daubing. You can see the doweling. All these logs are doweled. I think you can see the size of the lag screws over here. And I think we're just going to leave this right here and maybe put some brick into it. After restoration, Douglas County will add this property to their open space inventory, allowing school children and the general public to enjoy this wonderful example of early life on the frontier. We titled our cabin the Kroll Hammond Cabin because William Kroll had homesteaded where this cabin is located. And he uh, ran the post office in Huntsville. He was actually the second postmaster. Uh, D.C. Oaks was the first postmaster of Huntsville. Uh, Huntsville was the, had the first territorial post office uh, in the Colorado Territory. Before that time, settlers uh, had to go to Denver, where there was a federal territorial post office. So it was uh, a great improvement once the territorial road was established to be able to get your mail uh, down in Huntsville. Uh, the first thing that had to be done, it was not level. So we had uh, a company come in and they actually jacked up the cabin and put new um, rock around the foundation that never had a full foundation around it. It was just rock kind of here and there all the way around, but they went ahead and shored it up and uh, squared up the foundation. And then we began to plan uh, our fundraising to see if we could raise some money, and if the county could come up with some more money to uh, go ahead and complete the renovation. So is this a typical activity for the uh, your historical society, or is this the first of a kind? As far as the crawl cabin goes? As far as what uh, you're doing with the renovation? Uh, this is the first of a kind that I am aware of, certainly for Larkspur Historical Society. Uh, I believe it's, it's going to uh, uh, show a very good description of, of early construction methods. And uh, I think that it was fun to, to watch the renovation of it, to put on a roof, and to kind of uh, uh, pretend that you were in those early times and what life would have been like down there. Well, you, you talk about craftsmanship. You know, it's just amazing how you can make a log with an axe and make things fit so perfectly together here. This is a bare bones picture of the cabin. Uh, the county had come in and torn off the outside of the, all the additions to it, taken out the windows and uh, taken off the roof. What I find interesting too is the fact that they can tell you when you go to uh, core a log, they can tell you what season it was felled. And this, these particular logs were felled in the fall of 1873. I find that amazing. You can see where some of the cores were taken out. Here's one place that was drilled out to take a core sample. Take about three of them and see if you come up with approximately the same information on all three. These nails were um, picked up at the site. They obviously are uh, large enough to be something that you would use to put walls on and outside uh, boards and that sort of thing. They do appear to be uh, machine-made rather than handmade. 
We just completed putting the doors and the windows in. We were able to uh, get some wood from West Creek from an old ranch up there, the Fletcher Ranch, and uh, that wood for the gable ends was donated. We're, and uh, this weekend we put in doors and windows. We want to come on inside. We've got the, these windows came out of an old stagecoach building that was up in West Creek on the Fletcher Ranch. They're original windows. You can see how they're kind of wavy when you, when you look at them. You know that the glass is fairly old. And then the doors were put in. Trying to figure out, we're going to figure out some kind of a latching system here. I think uh, in, in that particular era, you would open a door with a rope assembly that would have, uh, that would hook onto a piece of wood here, and you would pull the rope from the outside, and that would op make the piece of wood uh, go up, and then you would have a bracing system over here, so you could lock it from the inside and pull the rope in, or if you left, a lot of times travelers in those days, you would leave the, the door so where someone could get in if they had to, so you would always leave the rope outside. So we're gonna have a rope assembly as our um, way to enter the doors. And this is wallpaper? We have right. wallpaper that uh, we removed from the cabin. This wallpaper certainly uh, would depict, I would think, the 1920s, maybe 1930s. Um, this is an original floor. It appears to be pine. We're going to patch that. And I think we're just going to leave this right here and maybe put some brick into it and uh, set our stove. We've got one of our members has a pot-bellied stove and thought this might be a good place to, to put the stove. So what about the other furnishings? What are you, how are you doing that? We had a fundraiser uh, back in June of this year down in Greenland, and we raised over $800 towards putting furnishings in here. We, um, we have a, a wash stand, we have a pitcher and a bowl, we have a bed, we have uh, a rug, and um, oh, several little kitchen implements. We're trying to find some old kitchen implements that we might put in shelving around here uh, over on the wall. We'll have to see how much room that we have left. But uh, we've got quite a bit of furnishing. I think we might have more than we need. When you get everything in here, you're going to find out that uh, uh, we probably have more than what we need, but we're trying to, again, make it as time-sensitive as we possibly can. I would think that this would be a great educational opportunity for us. It's a good family. educational opportunity. This is going to go to, uh, uh, into open space eventually. There is a trail system that is, uh, goes over to Hunt Mountain. There's uh, uh, the Hunt Ranch over there is into open space. Whether this could ever be uh, you know, hooked up with that particular trail system, I don't know. But uh, it would be fun if it could. But it certainly will be open for school children and it's going to be open to the public. Our main focus also, we have maintained uh, what we call our site survey books that are located down in local history. We try to uh, uh, document uh, from newspaper articles, uh, things that went on in Larkspur and Greenland, Spring Valley. We have a very large area since we cover everything from Cherry Valley up to the National Forest to the west around uh, Perry Park. I know another thing you all do in association with the Douglas County Historic Preservation Board is oral histories. We've done a lot of oral histories with people down in that area. And, but this has been one of the larger projects we have done. We were involved in the Greenland open space. Uh, documenting uh, history of Greenland, signage, documentation, and things like that. We did all of that. Uh, and in Perry Park, we have uh, tried to document uh, some things around the Perry Park Ranch. This used to be a stage stop. The stage came through from Denver to Colorado Springs. And people stopped and carved their initials and their names. Um, 1871. 1910. Up above me, there's 1876. And we did a, a video, you guys did the video, for uh, the Perry Park area, history of Perry Park, and that is so significant down there. In his logs, Hayden called the area Pleasant Park. Hayden was accompanied by renowned artist and photographer William Henry Jackson. Jackson captured much of the area's unique scenery on canvas and in photographs. The rose-colored rock formations in the hills overlooking Plum Creek soon became a favorite subject for Jackson. 
A few years later, in 1872, a wealthy railroad man, John Dietz Perry, purchased 4,000 acres of Pleasant Park. He built several ranch buildings at the foot of a large rock. He later named the rock Nanashunt. Unfortunately, Huntsville, you know, was so, is one of the early developments. We have no pictures of Huntsville that we know of. One of our projects next year is going to be um, more and more uh, pictures and information is going online with the Western History Collection at the library downtown. Someone needs to take the time to go down there and see what might be available that we are unaware of. Um, we rely a lot on Josephine Marr's book, of course, and, uh, but we, we want to have a project for our calendar next year. We'd like to find a lot of the early ghost towns that are no longer towns, such as Huntsville and uh, Quea and uh, um, Douglas and some of those. If we can find pictures of those, we're going to try and do a calendar. So that's going to be one of the things that our members are going to address next year. I'm going to see what Western history has and, uh, you know, it's more and more information is being available thanks to our computerized technology now. And uh, I think it, it will prove to be a very interesting project. We even have Ida May No working. She's 82 years old and she's helping. And this is when we were starting to get disgusted with the whole thing. Anna decided she's going to have a mask on. We thought, you know, we're getting tired. Of it. We have to give it up. And so she's got her hand on her. Who's with me? Um, that is a friend of one of the members. I'm not quite sure who that is. We had lots and lots of debris, of course, to haul away. Our historical society had a dream. We knew that the Higby Purple Trail was going to have to be torn down, and we wanted to commemorate it in some way. To learn more about the activities of the Larkspur Historical Society or to purchase a video in the history of Perry Park, call 303-681-3738.